The big event that's coming up next year is the so-called heavening, where the block reward is going to shrink. It happens every four years. Some people think that the diminished new supply of the coins will mean supply and demand equation improves. Uh, what's your guess for whether this proves to be a major catalyst next year? I think it's, it's a big milestone. It happens every four years. People look forward to it. But the trick there is that we know when it happens. Right. And that, to me, means it's priced in. People that are trading in significant volumes that are smart traders yeah. know when the halving is going to happen. They know when this uh, increased supply is going to slow down. Yeah. And so to me, that has to be priced in already. Maybe there's some movement around it just because it's a major news event. Mm. But I don't think it has the supply and demand impact that people think it will. Does it mean that people will trade in and out of it to go into other cryptocurrencies and, and look for a better entry point into Bitcoin? I mean, how, do, how does Bitcoin's move compare with the other cryptocurrencies when you get this once every four year happening? Right. So I, I don't think the happening itself is going to have that much of an impact. If you wanted to make a move, I think, again, it's already priced and you could have made your move already. I don't think mm. you need to wait for that moment. That said, I am feeling way more excitement now than I have felt any time in the last 18 months. It feels like momentum is really building in the space. Like you're saying, Bitcoin is up this week, although yeah. down in kind of the last month or so. Um, but I think we are seeing a level of um, building that has happened in 2019. Yeah. People are ready to ship. It feels like there's a moment of kind of everyone's putting on their jumpsuits, getting ready to go and take off. And, uh, and I, we haven't seen that since 2017. Let's talk about that building because there's sort of two sides to this. One is, is what we see at the institutional investment level. And I feel like every day someone has some new custodial digital currency asset holding solution. And then there is the building that happens on the protocol level, which is improving the fungibility, privacy, um, scalability, fees, things like that. Which part was more exciting for you in 2019? I think they're exciting in very different ways. Okay. On the custodial side and on the financialization side, yeah. that feels like just a slow march to completion. These companies are building mm. more and more products, satisfying more and more needs of a broader and broader set of investors. There's talk sometimes of an institutional wave of capital coming in. Yeah. I don't see that. What I see is a slow rising tide that as these companies continue to build products and solutions for larger institutional investors, we'll see them continue to march into the space and net inflows happening. The protocol side is a little bit lumpier. It happens in bursts when there's a major innovation and new protocol launches. That to me is the most exciting thing that can happen in the space, but it's less certain. It's not that you know next month something's going to launch and the month after that, but it's when these protocols reach completion, they reach maturity, they launch and they gain traction. Yeah. That's what we're all here for. I covered the ETF industry as well, and I wanted to get your thoughts on a Bitcoin ETF because people have been waiting for it, they've been applying for it, they've been registering for it, and the SEC keeps saying thanks but no thanks or not yet. And we don't really have any indication of when that's going to come. Um, we do have Stone Ridge Asset Management winning regulators backing for an interval fund that some say could serve as a stepping stone. Um, it'll hold Bitcoin futures but not the actual underlying asset. How big of a move is this? Is this critical in terms of being uh, opening the floodgates? I think that's the right question to ask, and I would actually compare it to the halving that we were talking about mm. earlier. It's built up as this major mm. news event that this Bitcoin ETF is going to cause huge inflows to the space. Mm -hmm. I believe that if you wanted to buy Bitcoin, you found a way already. There's enough products out there, again, futures products, certain brokerages offer Bitcoin now, and of course buying it on these large <clears> trusted spot exchanges. I don't think there's a large amount of capital waiting on the sidelines for an ETF to launch. Again, I think it'll be exciting. It will broaden access, and that's a good thing. But I don't expect to see massive inflows when that does happen. Interesting. Okay, so you've expressed a number of things that could arguably point to a bullish future. Havening aside, development happening, institutional things being built out, uh, protocol advances. On the other hand, you look at the state of crypto, and overall, it's obvious to anyone that there is just still an incredible amount of complete garbage out there. Coins that will never have any future projects that are completely pointless. Is it, give you pause on your optimism that we haven't seen more of that wash out yet? A lot of it has washed out. If you think back to 2017, Coinless itself, we've run under a dozen token sales. We've seen 3,500 inbound. And so there are thousands that have tried and failed. And now okay. I think it's much harder. Uh, for, that to, for that to happen. So we're seeing less and less of the garbage. It is still there, but at the same time, investors are getting much more discerning. They're being able to tell much better. And so the scams are not having as much success as they were. And that gives me optimism. Are there still problems in the space? Absolutely, but it's slowly getting washed out. And those inbound uh, you know, desires to do token offerings of various uh, forms, there's still interest in that? There is absolutely still interest. What I will say is that the bottom chunk of the market has dropped out. Got it. So our overall volume has gone down, but the qualified lead volume, those good projects, there's about the same number today as there were in 2017, and we'll see that continuing in the future.